Hello everyone and in this lesson we're going to take a look at how to build your own custom volume shader in Material X. The only limitation with this is uh, it only works for Karma CPU because XPU doesn't support all the base level Material X nodes as yet. So uh, not restrictions but it is slow to render okay? and uh, it could also have some stability issues. But beyond that, if you want to do something really custom uh, as far as volumes are concerned, this is how you would approach it. Okay, so this is a relatively advanced lesson. It's not really basic, but uh, someone wrote me an email yesterday and they were asking, you know, how would you go about rendering uh, color volumes or colored volumes in Karma? And so I started to, you know, go down that rabbit hole and that's how we ended up here. Okay, okay, so. Uh, this is not a basic pyro class so i'm just going to show you the pyro setup that i have okay so what i have is uh, i have my basic uh, rubber toy and i used an attribute from map to transfer the texture to point level okay and then i have a pyro source which is set to initialize burn so it generates a burn and temperature and then i also want the color so i used an attribute transfer to col to transfer like you know this color data over to my points okay okay and then you do a volume rasterize i brought in the temperature and burn and also the color okay the cd okay now as far as the pyro solver is concerned it's fairly simple i'm doing like if you come into fields there's like i'm emitting smoke from flame okay and then uh shape wise i have like lower buoyancy and more turbulence and then i just cached the whole thing out now, one extra thing that I have done with this, because I want the color data in there as well, okay, is if I come into the look and I get rid of the fire, you'll see that I have colored smoke. Okay. So what I've done is if you come into fields, or sorry, if you come into sourcing and you come down, then you create a new source and you bring in the color. Okay, so you, you say your source volume is CD and the target field is CD and set it to vector. Okay, so that will make sure that your color data is stored as a volume. Okay, of course, like here it's showing you with this because when I cached it, the, you know, the flame was, the flame value was kept at 25. Okay, okay so that's as far as the basic, you know, uh, smoke setup is concerned. Okay, so let's come into LopNet just to show you what I have. So I brought in my smoke and I have one dome light Okay, and I have uh, one disk light, like if I see it, it should be there, there you go. Okay, so I have a disk light hitting from here and I have a dome light in the middle. There's no HDR or anything. And then I just have my karma. Okay, so to get started, now this is, as I said, this is more customized. Okay, like if you're doing a standard, uh, if, if you're doing like a standard pyro render or a smoke render, then you do get something called as if you type in pyro you'll get something called xpu pyro preview and this is the one that you want to use as far as you know like standard uh, volume rendering is concerned with karma xpu or cpu and this is a very good node okay because it gives you like all the basic stuff you get your density and you know smoke color all of that you also get like if you're using the pyro material node Okay, so you can, you have your scatter value and fire and you know, like all of that stuff. But the issue with this is, this is a hard coded node. Okay, and you can't connect anything into this. So you have like four volumes that you can bring in. But beyond that, like if you want to multiply density with color or temperature with flame and you know, like or anything weird, you can't do that with this. Okay, so instead we're going to build our own. Okay, so what you want to do is uh, first like type in volume and you'll get something called as material x volume material okay this is the base material that we need okay so if you i'll just call this as volume shader and if you if we open up uh, the solaris scene graph then this is the material that you'll see see so over here you'll get volume shader okay and I can just assign this. So assign, like take the volume and take the volume shader. Okay, now right now it's empty. So you won't really see much of anything, but that's fine. Now, the second thing you need is, uh, if you type in karma, then you'll get something called as karma volume. 
This is like a ready-made node that you get now with, I believe it's with 19.5. Because what you also get is you do get something called as a material X volume. This is more base level. Okay, like uh, you need like more things to connect into this. Like you'll get like VDF nodes and then you'll get like EDF nodes. So VDF is volume and EDF is emission. But that's like too much work. Okay, so what the Karma volume does is it gives you like all of that stuff, you know, in one node. And it's also a little more faster to compile. So this is the one that you want to use. Okay, so this connects in here. And if you try to render right now, nothing is going to happen. Okay, like if I just set up Karma, uh, it's, it doesn't have any data in there. So it doesn't know what to do. Okay, so now what you want to do is we want to do a couple of things. Uh, firstly, we need to set up the absorption and scattering and they need to be controlled using the density value. Okay, so start off with a geometry property value, which is our way to bring in attributes and call it density. Okay, and we bring in density over here. Okay. Now, the absorption and scattering are both like vector values. So take a constant. So we'll take a material x constant and we'll call this as absorption and I'll call this as scattering. And they both will be at color. Okay. And we'll give it a white value for now. Now, what we want to do is we want to take both these values and multiply it with the density. But firstly, I'll just take a power node. So this will help me control the intensity of my or the density of my uh, of my volume. And then we will take two multiply nodes. So one and two. And the absorption and scattering, they both go into input one. Because if you put the float value into input one, then the output also becomes a float value and we want a vector. And then this comes in here and this goes in there. And let me just save this file. And so if I plug this in over here and there and hit render, now you will just restart it, there you go. Now we have our basic, you know, volume. And so now the scatter color becomes the color of the smoke. Okay, so you can do this and the absorption is naturally it's like how light or dark the smoke should be like how much light it absorbs. But you can also try to put in some color there, which usually goes in the reverse direction. So yeah, so if you have a color wheel, like whatever color you pick, it's picking the opposite. I understand like why it does that I can't really explain it. Okay, so we don't want to do this like let's keep this to white. That's fine. Okay, but now we can start doing the fancier stuff. So we do have a, a CD field with us because that's what we've generated. Okay, so what I can do is I can type in a geometry property value again. Let me just pause this. And so I can come in here, I'll call this color and I can bring in CD and let's do one thing before. And so this will be set to color and we'll also take a color correct node. So we'll get a material X color correct. So now, so all of this stuff you can't do with the standard, you know, pyro node that you get. And then plug this out over here. Okay. And if we render it now, so I'll press shift P, it's not going to show anything. So you'll always have to restart it, but there you go. So now you have color. And you know, I can do weird things with this if I want to. So there you go, you know, like you can do fancy stuff with this. Okay, now, uh, so this is as far as, you know, like the basic setup is concerned. But now we can, let's say, uh, we want to start setting up the emission. Okay, so what I can do is, I can take another geometry property value. Okay, and this, uh, let's say we want to bring in flame. So let me pause this and, uh, you know, we'll bring in a color value here. So let's call this as fire color. And let's set this to like an orange. And I can just pick up a multiply. 
So let's say this should be, let's say this is intensity. Okay, so I'll keep this to around 10. And, and let's just say for now, if I just uh, plug this in over here to emission, okay, and just do a restart, see, there you go. So what I can do is now if I multiply this, so if I take another multiply node and we need the color and the fire and plug that in and restart, there you go. So I make it around say 50. Okay, now uh, let's say as a final thing, you want to control the color of the fire or you know, the based on the flame or you also want to control the intensity of the fire based on the flame data, okay? Or any other data that you want. Okay, so what I can do is, let's say instead of the fire color like this, I can take a, I can take a color ramp. So I can take a color cubic ramp and this is the flame. So you can bring in the flame or you can bring in the temperature, like, you know, whatever you prefer. And I'll take a range node. So we have like a fit range. So we have a material X range and I can plug this in over here. And that goes out to, you know, this particular value. And let's feed that in. Okay, so restart render. And now what I can do is I can come in here and I can set this to, let's try plasma. And there you go. So you can do, you know, more fancier stuff with this. So what I can do here with the range is like, if I start to adjust this, see, so I can, you know, kind of bring it up or down. So I have a lot more control over it than I had before. I mean, similarly, if you if you were to plug in the uh, like the ramp with the density, so you can also control the color of your smoke. Okay, like if I just take instead of the color node, let's say if I just uh, you know I'll duplicate this, and what I can do is I can plug in the density here and plug that out into my color. So if I do a restart render, it should be completely different from what we're getting right now. See, you know, uh, let me just, let, I'll just turn off the flame value for now. Yeah, let me just make this zero. So I can, you know, start to adjust this a bit. Let's just see what we get. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's nice. Let's make it 50. And let's bring this up to 10. See, so you can do like this kind of stuff, which is a lot more customizable. It's been relatively stable. Like I haven't had any crashes. So you can use this if you want to. But yeah, just, you know, be careful because this is only CPU based. So it is going to be a lot slower. Like if you're coming from Redshift or Octane or whatever, it's going to feel a lot slower, but it's also way more customizable. Like uh, there is nothing in Redshift or Octane that allows you this level of customizability where you can like, you know, mix and match and do like a million different things with volumes. Okay. okay as a final thing, just for, you know, like fun purposes and I don't know how good this is going to be, but you can also multiply this with like noise if you want to. Okay, so I'm just going to pause this. And let's say if I want to multiply the flame uh, with a noise map. Okay, so what I can do is, uh, let me just keep this here. I'm going to take, a, let's type in noise and I'll get something called as fractal noise. Hold on, let's just come to material X, procedural 3D, we'll get fractal, material X fractal 3D, okay. And what I need is, I need to do two things here. So firstly, I need a position data. So material X position, and we'll put a, we'll just put a multiply for, uh, you know, frequency. So this is the frequency. Okay, and then uh, I can just take, uh, 
I'll just plug this into position and I can multiply it with this. So let's just take a multiply here. Sorry. Uh, okay, and then let's multiply it with the flame value. So we'll just take a multiply and put this through a clamp node. Okay, because sometimes it generates values that are like over and above the range that we want. Let's put this through a range node as well. So we'll get a little more control. And then I can plug this into material clamp. Okay, So plug that in. And let's do a render and see what we get. So shift P and then restart it. And okay, let's just see what we have. This might not have been the best of things to do. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. So we're getting something. Okay. Let's take something. Let's do a 10. Oh, there you go. That's weird enough. And we can also take the out. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, it's weird, but uh, let's, let's try something else because I was, I was trying this before. It looks weird, but it looks, it, it's, it's fancy enough. You can try to multiply this with the velocity. Okay, so I'll just... Okay, this does look strange. But for our purposes right now, it should be fine. This is probably not the best way to work with this. Okay, let's work with this. This, this is fine. Okay, okay uh, what I can do is, as an absolute final thing, <laughs> is... Uh, Let's pick up another geometry property value and I'm going to take the velocity. Let me just pause this. So we'll type in well and this is a vector 3. We'll put a multiply and we're going to add it into our position. So let's just put in a constant here so I can define like how much the intensity of this should be. This will be at 1 and this will add into the uh, position data here. So we'll put an add node. So material x add and this plugs in here. Okay, let's just let's see what we get. So restart render. There you go. See, so it sort of distorts it based on the velocity. Okay, so I'll just let this I'll, I'll let this render through and yeah, don't do this, but I think the rest of it is fine. Like if we if we just stop multiplying the flame with whatever, I think the rest of it looks good. Okay, but yeah, it's it's an idea. Like you can multiply this with, with, the, with this with density as well. Like it looks fancy. Okay, so I can just get rid of this and hit a restart. There you go. Like this looks fine. Okay, but anyways, it gives you ideas of what you can do with this. Okay, okay. Um, if anybody wants, I'll cover the basic pyro node as well. I'll do that in, in the next lesson, but it's really simple. Like it's a five minute class. Okay, but if you want, I'll, I'll do that in the next lesson. Okay, and yeah, that's pretty much it.